playing this game of Mancala with my kids, but somebody left the board out overnight. It wasn't me, and there was a rainstorm, and it completely warped. So instead of going out and buying a new one, I thought maybe I could try to make one by myself. So I found this piece of poplar in the hobby section of Home Depot, and I'm gonna try to make it out of this. Let's see if I can recreate the game. I started off by marking up the poplar board using the old warped game as a reference for all the sizes. The board I was working with was 3 quarter inches thick, about 24 inches long, and 7 inches and change wide. I hate doing math. So in order to get the center of the 7 and change board, I took my ruler, put it at the corner, and set it at an angle, and put it at an even number, which was 10 in this case. And then I marked off 5, which is half of 10, and there I have the middle of the board without having to do any math. This is a great way to find the center of any odd size board. After it was all marked up, I got to working on the holes. So I made a few failed jigs and templates, but what ended up working was this scrap piece of MDF that I found with a 5 inch hole saw cut into it and a half inch core box bit in my router. So all I had to do was mark off the center of where I wanted the hole to be on the game and line it up with a center lines that I had made on the template. So it was a little bit difficult because after you start cutting, you're cutting away at your lines. So I just had to be really careful about lining them up and see if you could see a little bit clearer where the lines are. This was really just so satisfying to watch as I was doing this. And I just kept lowering my bit until I got to the depth that I wanted. I originally planned on using a bowl carving bit or a dish carving bit in my router when I first thought of this idea, but I didn't like how big the hole was when I used this 5 inch hole saw, and I didn't like how small it was when I used the 4 inch hole saw. So this core box bit was the perfect size, it was about 2 and a quarter inches wide, but it leaves a very rough bottom, but I figured out a solution if you keep watching towards the end of how to sand the bottoms of these holes pretty easily. So um, if you could spot the unintended irony in this little clip here, um, comment below. So just moving right along, the main 12 holes are basically very repetitive and I just kept on measuring to see that they were all the same depth. Now the home or the goals or whatever you want to call them, the big ovals that are on opposite sides of the board, they were a little bit different where I had to connect the two holes from either side. So first I just used the router to make the two opposite holes and then I moved the template to the center and used my router to route out that middle part in the center. And I was like, oh, this is like seems like pretty easy enough. I'm gonna just like whip out my chisel and I'm gonna chisel away and make a perfect little oval here. But it didn't really work out quite like as I thought it would. It was not as easy as I thought it would be. And I then decided to take my router with an edge guide and just smooth up those sides and make it completely smooth and even. This was actually my first time using the edge guide on the router and it's really handy. I'm definitely gonna use it more often. All right, so since I use this core box bit and not the bowl carving bit, the bottoms of the holes are not completely flat. If I would have used this bowl carving bit, the bottoms would be super smooth and I would have to do minimal amount of sanding. But because I used the core box bit, there's bumps and ripples and I have to do a lot of sanding to get it to be super smooth. And I do not want to do that by hand. So I'm trying to figure out an easy way to do it with one of my power tools. So I have this brass rod and this remnant from a hole saw. I'm gonna epoxy them together, put some sandpaper on the bottom, stick this up into my drill press and hopefully that will sand out the holes. Let's see if it works. So this is where my hoarding is actually a really good thing. I never throw anything away and now I have these remnants of hole saws and all these brass rods and everything and I can make these cool little jigs. So I just cut the sandpaper to size and I took off that like felt backing that's on it so that the double sided tape would stick to it a little bit better and then just cut off the excess tape. I actually had to take it over to my belt sander and taper it a little bit so it fit the bottoms of the holes and it worked perfectly. It, I was so happy with how it worked out. I would have sanded for days if I didn't put this up in my drill press. It didn't eliminate all the hand sanding I had to do. I still had to like ease the edges and all that, but not a big deal. Then I cut the board in half and trimmed it all to size. The final dimensions of the game is about 23 inches long and six and change wide. And the final step was to rat out the space for the piano hinge. I used the edge guide again, see I told you I was gonna use it again, um, on the router to create the space for the hinge. It worked perfectly. And it's basically done at this point. I used two coats of white bomb poly sanding between each coat and I just love how this poplar grain pops. You know, poplar is such a regular wood, people just paint over it and every once in a while, 
you'll find these pieces with these purples and these greens and I'd just love to stock up on those pieces and do something special with it. And the last step was to put on the hinge. So I like to use double sided tape on the hinge so it stays in place when I pre-drill the holes. And I also clamp the two boards together so they stay perfectly even with each other. Then I just pre-drilled and put these screws in. I was using the existing hardware from the old warped game board, but I'm sure you can find this easily. And then I put the latch on and it is done. This was such a fun project. I'm so happy with how it came out. I love that I could fold it away. Hopefully the beads won't get lost that way. And I love the green and the poplar. I love that such an inexpensive wood could just look so cool. Like those purples and that green within those holes there. It's just really great. And I hope my kids will enjoy this for years to come. Let's see it in action. my side. Let's go. Okay. One, two. I'm Yay! Let's go again! Yes, that was an awesome move, buddy. Whoa. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing, check out my website, or watch another one.